Hello, my name is Dave Rakel. I'm here with my good friend Dave Kiefer, and we're at the UW Integrated Medicine Program. And we're talking about how to wean off a proton pump inhibitor. So, so Dave, these are darn good drugs. They really help reduce the symptoms of reflux as well as help heal ulcers. So they're really a good medication. Uh, but as with many good things, sometimes we have a tendency to use them longer than we should. Mm. And um, so now we're realizing that acid, nature gave us acid for a reason and that that might have some risks. Would you mind sure. discussing some of those risks? Yeah, you're exactly right. These are very powerful medications. They're very effective. Um, we use them in many different ways. We use them to diagnose gastritis and heartburn. So someone we're not really sure what their symptoms of bloating, chest pain, substernal burning might be, and we use the medication and it completely goes away, then that actually helps us make a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it will help people become asymptomatic. Um, it's unclear how long we're supposed to use those medicines. Um, the, the short term certainly uh, makes sense in, in many cases, but when we use them too long, then um, the chronic suppression of acid starts to cause some troubles. So we've talked about in one of our other videos how if you suppress the acid, then our own feedback mechanism that, that keeps the sphincter muscle closed between the esophagus and the stomach might not stay closed, might open more and might actually increase symptoms um, more. There are other reasons that we need acid. We need acid to digest our food, to fend off infection. Very interesting research results showing now a connection between chronic acid suppression and community acquired pneumonia in some individuals. We need acid to keep bacteria from growing in our small intestine, so yeah. we're more likely to aspirate that. Is that the thought? I, I think that's the connection, yeah. yeah. So um, in other words, now we're starting to think about, okay, maybe in the short term, these medications, these H2 blockers or PPIs, as we say, uh, might be useful, but perhaps not long term. So then when we think of... Unless you have Zollinger-Ellison syndrome sure. or really bad reflux disease that they're probably necessary. Or you've had ulcers recently or even a Barrett's esophagus. Right. There are some very severe conditions that, of course, you'd want to use these more powerful medications. But the majority of people I see who are on these long-term don't have those conditions. And if they wanted to come off, what are some practical recommendations we could make for them? Well, the first is, and uh, we've talked about this before, is, is um, preparing yourself to come mm -hmm. off of these medications because if you simply stop these medications cold, the, um, in many cases we see people rebound and have a worsening of their symptoms in the short term. So for a week or two perhaps after stopping that medicine, they might feel like their symptoms come back, which is often why then people start those medicines again. Yeah. So preparing yourself that that, that might happen. And, and to prepare ourselves, do you have them taper down to the lowest dose possible? Yeah, certainly. I've, you know, little by little, you know, wean them down and then realize that even from a low dose of one of those medicines yeah. to zero, they might still get a worsening of their symptoms. Yeah. So we have to prepare for that. And we reviewed that interesting research showing that even asymptomatic people who were put on this medication as a, for the study, when they went off of it, they actually yeah. developed the symptoms that many people use this for, which is dysphagia and heartburn that lasts, as you mentioned, about six to eight days. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so we, uh, we need to prepare people that that time is coming. How might we bridge, uh, use other things to help reduce reflux disease while we come off that drug? What are some things that you found to be beneficial that someone could use while they go off the PPI? Yeah, sure. Um, so if we take an integrative approach to someone's health, and um, like we mentioned in one of the other videos, making sure that none of the offending foods mm -hmm. um, or lifestyle issues are going on that might be causing that esophageal sphincter not to be working well. Mm -hmm. So you want to maximize the, the, the action of that muscle to keep acid down. Yeah. So that'd be one thing. How about some botanicals? What, what botanicals might you recommend during that time? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's really nice that we have some dietary supplements that can help with those acid feelings and seem to be a little bit safer in the long term. So one of my favorites is a form of licorice um, that's, um, that comes in chewable capsules. And licorice can be a coating agent. We call it a demulsant botanical. Mm -hmm. um, to coat the mucous membranes of the lower esoph esophagus and stomach and help to kind of protect that tissue from acid and to decrease the, the symptoms that people might, might have. How yeah. would you, 
DGL? Is that, uh, give <laughs> yeah. me the dose. What, That's what, right. what would so, I use? So if you use plain licorice root, which would work in a decoction or a boiled form, um, it has a compound called glycyrrhizin, which over time, used chronically, which many people need for heartburn or gastritis, um, it might cause an elevation in blood pressure. So um, the uh, companies have developed a deglycyrrhizinated form of licorice, or DGL, chewable capsules that you would um, chew before meals to kind of help um, soothe the esophagus and stomach. Um, usually, I'd say you know, they come in 300 to 400 milligrams in a capsule, a chewable capsule. Um, and you'd eat and chew perhaps two to four of those before meals um, mm -hmm. three times a day. Yeah. How about acupuncture? There's been some interesting research on acupuncture for reflux disease. Could someone get acupuncture while they're coming off their proton pump inhibitor? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to know um, what you think about that, but it's, uh, it's such a wonderful um, uh, kind of adjunctive or complementary yeah. uh, medical system that I haven't had any interactions or adverse effects from using acupuncture in yeah. this context. And uh, at least in my experience, uh, acupuncture helps with the energetics of the body and helps get it moving down and through and out, uh, which I've had some people use acupuncture as well as DGL and modern yeah. exercise and change their diet, yeah. and they came off their PPI quite successfully. Yeah. And, you know, there's one other that I really like, which is um, a very inexpensive plant that you can buy, Slipryum. Mm -hmm. Do you yes. mind if we do a quick little yeah. demo? Yeah. Um, so Slippery Elm you can buy in a lot of herbal medicine stores, integrative pharmacies, and it comes in a powder. And you would use some powder and mix it in with water, and it makes a bit of a slurry. And uh, as you swallow that, it's a fiber source. It stays in your gastrointestinal tract but coats the tissue and soothes in the same way that licorice does. And it's nice, too, as a fiber that doesn't get absorbed that I don't worry about systemic effects. Mm -hmm. For instance, during pregnancy, I feel a little bit more safe using that kind of medication. Um, and I'll show you how it works. So, for instance, in your house, you might take a glass, which I'll have uh, Dr. Rakel hold here, and um, use a little bit of slippery elm, which comes in, uh, you can usually buy it, and they put it in a Ziploc bag like this. And I'd say I would just estimate maybe, oh, a teaspoon or so on the bottom there. It's, um, it's very light and fluffy. And then mix in just a little bit of water. It is very light. A little bit of water there, say, oh, a couple of ounces of water, and then you're going to need to mix it up. It's, um, it's very organic tasting. Some people don't like that, and it's fine to sweeten it up slightly if that's going to increase compliance um, in yourself or your patients. And you do this and probably stir it for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. It'll get thicker and thicker, um, and then you just take a quick little drink of it. And there we go. You could use slightly hot water if you wanted to. And... Um, Cheers. Uh, and you can kind of feel it go down. It definitely tastes very organic. Let me try some of that. Um, um, but it works very well in kind of coating the throat and uh, helping with mm. GERD and um, stomach symptoms. Somewhat cool and refreshing. <laughs> I thought it would taste much worse than that. <laughs> How about uh, one of the older drugs we used to use all the time that binds to exposed protein if there's irritation of the GI tract, caraphate. Do you ever use caraphate much to bridge people off? In, in rare circumstances, but tell me yeah. about it. Well, I, it, it's a safe medication. It's cheap. It's generic. It, it's kind of like a, an acid that binds to exposed protein. And uh, it gives someone's a pill to replace the other pill with. And, and it, it's beneficial and it helps empower them to take something to help soothe the stomach along with this very nice tasting <laughs> slippery home uh, that might help them be more successful. That sounds great. Anything else that, that you found to be helpful in getting people off their PPIs? Uh, let's see. Well, you know, we could always talk about if there's an anxiety component and mm, stress reduction, yeah. of course, that would yeah. certainly help. Um, uh, yeah, so I think all of those things work yeah. together. We'll talk more about that, but just a simple breathing exercise to do, even before meals, might help balance out that sympathetic and parasympathetic, that relaxation response that helps digestion and helps the peristalsis things move through your GI tract much better. That sounds great. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>